Let's take a look at the program. It's very similar to the hardwire relay-based ladder logic implementation. Rung 1 consists of the series connection of two make instructions scanning digital inputs 0 and 1, the stop and start push buttons. For digital output 0, the M contactor to energize, both the stop and the start button must be closed. Rung 2 is a holding circuit based on the real-world status of the M contactor rather than some programmed instruction. If the M contactor truly closes, the M1 auxiliary contact closes and digital input 2 establishes a holding circuit. Digital input 2 in rung 3 also starts a timer with a 3 second preset executing the DOE function. When the timer is complete, the timer done instruction in rung 4 energizes digital output 1, the shunt contactor. An operator can press and release stop to stop the motor and reset the system. Here's a real-time simulation of this circuit using Automation Studio. As we illustrated in the walkthrough, an operator presses and releases start to close the M contactor, which establishes a holding circuit and starts the timer. Three seconds later, the timer reaches its count and closes the shunt contactor, shorting out the resistor bank. As we anticipated, the motor starts in high resistance mode with high starting torque and less inrush. After a predetermined delay allowing for a degree of acceleration, Shunt contactor shorts out the rotor resistance bank and the motor switches to low resistance mode, suitable for high speed efficient operation. Here's the system in operation once again. In summary, the PLC implementation behaves exactly like the hardwire relay based ladder logic implementation, while the PLC version is reprogrammable. Case in point, Consider the heartbreaking labor involved in modifying the previous secondary resistor reduced voltage starter to include not one, but rather four banks of starting resistors and shunt contactors. When all shunt contactors are open, resistors A, B, C, and D are placed in series with the rotor, thus the rotor experiences maximum resistance. When shunt contactor 1 closes, only resistors B, C, and D are placed in series with the rotor, thus the rotor experiences less resistance. Similarly, when shunt contactor 2 closes, only resistors C and D are placed in series of the rotor, thus the rotor experiences less and less resistance, and so on. Stage closures of shunt contactors 1, 2, 3, and then 4 allow a more gradual transition from high to medium to low to no resistance in the rotor circuit. The stage secondary resistor reduced voltage starter might be suitable for a larger load that takes some time to bring up to speed. The first five rungs are essentially repeats of our original single stage hardwire relay based ladder logic implementation, which closes the M contactor on the stator, establishes a holding circuit, and starts timer 1. Three seconds later, timer 1 energizes the S1 shunt contactor coil. The S1 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor bank A. The additional rungs control the remaining shunt contactors and their associated timers. When shunt contactor S1 closes, the auxiliary S1 contact closes in rung 6 also and energizes timer 2. Three seconds later when timer 2 completes the on delay function, it closes the timer 2 contact in rung 7 and energizes the S2 shunt contactor coil. The S2 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor banks A and B. Simultaneously auxiliary S2 contact closes in rung 8 and energizes timer 3. Three seconds later when timer 3 completes the on delay function, it closes the timer 3 contact in rung 9 and energizes the S3 shunt contactor coil. The S3 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor banks C, B, and A. Finally, when auxiliary S3 contact closes in rung 10, it energizes timer 4. Three seconds later, when timer 4 completes the on delay function, it closes the timer 4 contact in rung 11 and energizes the S4 shunt contactor coil. The S4 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor bank D. C, B, and A. An operator can press and release stop to stop the motor and reset the system. What you get is a stage transition from high to medium to low to no rotor resistance suitable for a heavy load that takes some time to bring up to speed. Here's a real-time simulation of this circuit using Automation Studio. As we illustrated in the walkthrough, an operator presses and releases start to close the M contactor, establish a holding circuit, and start timer 1. Three seconds later, timer 1 reaches its count and closes shunt contactor S1, shorting out resistor bank A. Three seconds later, timer 2 reaches its count, closes shunt contactor 2, shorting out resistor bank B and A. Three seconds later, timer 3 reaches its count, closes shunt contactor S3, shorting out resistor bank C, B, and A. And finally, three seconds later, timer 4 reaches its count and closes shunt contactor S4, shorting out the resistor bank D, C, B, and A. 
As we anticipated, the motor starts in high, transitions to medium, then to low, and then to no resistance mode. Here's the system in operation once again. In summary, by rewiring the hardwire relay-based ladder logic implementation, it gained new functionality. This being said, imagine all the heartbreaking work that went into this. Look at this. You're adding like three extra coils, three extra auxiliary contacts, three extra timers, three extra timer contacts, and what, like a minimum of 18 extra wires? Someone is bound to screw this up, and even if they don't screw up, it'll take all day to get it done. Think of this as just one of hundreds of systems that needed this modification. There has got to be a better way. One easier method might be to make use of a reprogrammable PLC. The PLC implementation necessitates only three additional shunt contactors, S2, S3, and S4. Absolutely no additional hardware is necessary. New functionality can be gained simply by reprogramming it. Let's take a look at the program. The first four rungs are repeats of our previous PLC implementation, where if an operator presses and releases the start push button on digital input one, it energizes the M contact or coil on digital output zero, establishes a holding circuit with the M auxiliary contact on digital input two, and starts timer one in rung three. Three seconds later, timer one energizes the S1 shunt contact or coil on digital output one. The S1 shunt contact closes and shorts out resistor bank A. The additional rungs control the remaining shunt contactors and their associated timers. When digital output 1 is energized, it also starts timer 2 in rung 5. Three seconds later, when timer 2 completes the on-delay function, it energizes digital output 2 in rung 6. The S2 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor banks B and A. When digital output 2 is energized, it also starts timer 3 in rung 7. Three seconds later, when timer 3 completes the on-delay function, it energizes digital output 3 in rung 8. The S3 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor banks C, B, and A. Finally, when digital output 3 is energized, it also starts timer 4 in rung 9. Three seconds later, when timer 4 completes the on-delay function, it energizes digital output 4 in rung 10. The S4 shunt contactor closes and shorts out resistor bank D, C, B, and A. As with a hardwire relay-based ladder logic implementation, what you get is this staged transition from high to medium to low to no rotor resistance suitable for a heavy load that takes some time to bring up to speed. An operator can press and release stop to stop the motor and reset the system. Here's a real-time simulation of this circuit using Automation Studio. As we illustrated in the walkthrough, an operator presses and releases start to close the M contactor, establish a holding circuit, and start timer 1. Three seconds later, timer 1 reaches its count and closes shunt contactor S1, shorting out resistor bank A. Three seconds later, timer 2 reaches its count, closes shunt contactor 2, shorting out resistor bank B and A. Three seconds later, timer 3 reaches its count, closes shunt contactor S3, shorting out resistor bank C, B, and A. And finally, three seconds later, timer 4 reaches its count and closes shunt contactor S4, shorting out the resistor bank D, C, B, and A. As we anticipated, the motor starts in high, transitions to medium, then to low, and then to no resistance mode. In summary, by reprogramming rather than rewiring the PLC, it gained new functionality. Trust me, reprogramming sure beats rewiring, especially if this is just one of many systems necessitating this modification. All right, that's all I've got for you today. In conclusion, this lecture examined hardwire relay-based ladder logic and programmable logic controller or PLC-based implementations of single step and staged secondary resistor reduced voltage starters used to reduce inrush current demand for wound rotor induction motors. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.